Let me ask uh, by way of recommendations. I think a lot of people are curious about this kind of stuff. What three books, technical or fiction or philosophical or anything really, uh, had an impact on your life and and or you would recommend, besides, of course, your book? <laughs> There's one book I wish everyone could read. I'm not sure if you've read it. It's actually a children's book, like a young adult book. Mm-hmm. It's called The Giver. Yes. I. I uh, and it is a book whoa. that kids in school read now and i only sorry that that's a not that's wow uh because i've (laughs) sorry that that caught me off guard uh so when i first came to this country i didn't speak much it's really what made me uh it had a profound impact on my life and and at a really important moment because they they give it to kids Mm -hmm. like i think middle school i think or maybe elementary yeah something like that well i'm so surprised you've even heard of this book yeah so they give it but like it's the value of giving the right book to a person at the right time wow uh i was i was because it's very accessible do do we want to share what the story is without spoiling it uh yeah you can without spoiling right it's well it follows this boy in this very utopic society that's like perfect. It's been all clean cut and made perfect actually. Mm -hmm. And as he kind of comes of age, he starts realizing something's wrong with his world. And so it's part of that question, are we gonna evolve as, I mean, this isn't what's there, but it made me wonder, you know, are we evolving to a better place? Is there a day when we can eliminate, you know, poverty and hunger and crime and sickness? In this book, they pretty much have in the society that the boy's in and sort of follows him. And he becomes the chosen one to be like a receiver, the giver's the old wise man who retains some of the harshness of the outside world so that he can advise the people. As the sort of boy comes of age and is chosen for this special role, he finds the world isn't what he expects. And I don't know about you, but it was so profound for me because it jolts you out of reality. It's like, oh my God, what am I doing here? I'm just going with the flow yeah. with my society. How do I think outside the box and the confines of my society, which surely carries negative things with it that we don't realize today? Yeah, and also, yeah. and the flip side of that is, if you do take a step outside the box on occasion, uh, what's the psychological burden of that? Like, is that is is that a is that a step you want to take? Is that a journey you want to take? What is that life like? It's, I don't know. It, I felt like from the book you have to take it. I found from the book. I never thought like now that you're saying it, I, I see what you're saying. The burden is huge, but I always felt like the answer is yes. You absolutely want to know what's out. What's outside, but you can't do that if you're very, it's hard to be objective about your own reality. Yeah, I mean, it's a very human instinct, but uh, it it also, the book kind of shows that uh, it has an effect on you. (laughs) And it's a really interesting question about our society and taking a step out. It's by uh, Lois Lowry, I think is how you pronounce it. I really do hope everyone created it. And it is a young adult book, but it's still, it's incredibly, I'm really glad. I only read it because my kids got it for school. I just thought, okay, well, why don't I just see what this is about? And I just, wow. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I think it's also the value of education. I think, I'm surprised you mentioned it. I've never really mentioned it to anybody. I'm sure a lot of people had the similar experience like me and maybe. It's a generational thing though, because like the book came out, I think in the nineties. So if you're older than like me, that book didn't exist when we were in middle school. So I just do think a lot of people won't have heard of it. But it's an interesting question of like those books I mean, I'm reminded often, I, I suppose the same is true as other subjects, but books are special. At, at, the, at early age, like middle school, maybe early high school, this, those can change like the direction of your life. And also certainly teachers, they can change completely the direction of your life. There's so many stories about uh, teachers of mathematics, teachers of physics, of uh, any kind of subjects basically changing the direction of a human's life. That's like, not to get on the uh, the whole like almost like a political thing, but you know we uh, we undervalue teachers. Uh, it's a special it's a special position that they hold. Uh, so true, yeah. Well, I do have two other books or two other things. One is something I came across just a few days ago. Actually, it's actually a film called Picture a Scientist. Mm. And when you picture a scientist, you probably don't picture the women and women of color in this film. And it is a way to get outside your box. I really think everyone interested in science, even just peripherally, should watch this because it is shocking and sobering at the same time. And it talks about how 
Well, I think one of the messages across is, you know, we really are like, I don't know if we're hardwired to just like people like ourselves, but we're excluding a lot of people and therefore a lot of great ideas by not being able to think outside of how we're all stereotyping each other. So it's, it's, it's hard to kind of convey that. And you can just say, oh, yeah, I want to be more diverse. I want to be more open. But it's a nearly impossible problem to solve. And the movie really helps uh, open people's eyes to it. This book I put third because unlike The Giver, people may not want to read it. It's not as relevant. But when I was in my early 20s, I went to this big, this like 800 people large conference call, uh, run by the Wilderness Canoe Association in my t- hometown of Toronto. And there was a family friend there who I met, and he said, read this book, it'll change your life. Mm. And it actually changed my life. And it was a book called Sleeping Island by an author, P.G. Downs, who just coincidentally lived in this area, lived in the Boston area. Mm. And he was a teacher, I think at a private school. And every summer he would go to Canada with a canoe, often by himself. And he wrote this book, maybe in the 40s or 50s, about a trip he took in the late 1930s. And it was, I was just shocked that even at that time, although that was a long time ago, there were large parts of Canada that were untouched by white people. Wow. And he went up there and interacted like with the natives. He called the book, it had a subtitle that was called, there's something like Journey in the Barren Lands. Mm-hmm. And when you go up north in Canada, you pass the tree line, just like on a mountain. If you hike up a mountain, you get so far north, there aren't any trees. And he wrote eloquently about the land and about being out there. There weren't even any maps of the region. Mm-hmm. like in that time. And I just thought to myself, wow, like that you could just take the summer off and explore by canoe and go and see what's out there. And it led to me just uh, doing that, that very thing. Of course, it's different now, but going out to where the road ends and putting the canoe in the water and just, well, we had to have a plan. We didn't just explore, but go down this river, rivers with rapids and travel over lakes and portages and just really live. So just really explore. Screw it. That doesn't, Explorer, like, it yeah. doesn't... <laughs> or just use from a topo map, from a topographical map from the library. In those days, scary? Days, um, there were scary elements about of it, out of it, but part of the excitement or the joy or the desire was to be scared, like, oh. was to go out there and have, live on the edge. And persevere. Yeah. And persevere, yeah. <laughs>